Member for Caribou Chilcotin. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to bring attention to an issue which has uh, for certain gone unaddressed in countless BC communities for far too long. It's uh, no secret, Mr. Speaker, that uh, our province is experiencing a health care crisis. We've all heard the health care horror stories, but here are the facts. Walk-in wait times are the worst in the country. They're getting worse every year, increasing from 41 minutes in 2019 to an alarming 93 minutes. And if you have to be or happen to be in rural British Columbia, we can achieve times of as much as 10 hours. Accessing specialist care has also become increasingly difficult with the duration from referral to appointment growing from 12 weeks to 14. One in five British Columbians don't have a family doctor. Chronic understaffing persists. With Interior Health in my region reporting an increase in the vacancy rate from 5.1, Madam Speaker, to 13.7 in 2023, and yet there's no end in sight for these issues. 40% of BC's families' doctors are expected to retire in the next decade. BC also has the lowest ratio of undergraduate and postgraduate medical education seats in Canada, meaning that we are not training enough new doctors to replace the ones we're going to lose. But these issues are even more acute in rural communities where the voices of everyday realities of residents continue to be overlooked. As a representative of rural constituents, I understand the harsh realities faced by both patients and healthcare professionals in British Columbia. First, let's talk about service interruptions. Recent years have seen overnight ER closures in isolated and rural communities like Clearwater, Port Hardy, Port McNeil, Merritt, Oliver, Mackenzie, Prince Rupert, Kitimat, and so many, many more. Imagine showing up in need of an emergency attention only to hear that you will have to travel another hour or more to receive care and then, of course, face those long waits in an ER. Think about that for a moment, Madam Speaker. It literally could be the difference between life and death. Interior Health has had 18 service interruptions so far in 2024 alone. Northern Health has experienced a shocking 68 service interruptions during the same period. And this number continues to climb. 68 times, Madam Speaker, that essential health care services were closed, and we aren't even halfway through the year yet. Prince Rupert, for example, has had recorded 13 service interruptions so far this year, including overnight closures for five consecutive days in March. Chatwin has had 11 service interruptions and has had closure announcements every day for a week since May 4th. Caribou Memorial Hospital in my constituency had a sign posted outside their door in October of 2023 that read the emergency room is closed unless a patient is imminently dying. In the summer of 2023, nurses at the Bulkley Valley District Hospital were instructed to call 911 if their patients were in medical distress because of a lack of doctors to staff the ER. These service interruptions are a result of chronic understaffing and a failure to recruit and retain health care workers in rural communities. In rural BC, if even one physician calls in sick, it can result in a closure and the need to divert patients elsewhere. Health care workers are facing severe burnout. They desperately need more support and additional staff and better resources. There are also issues in recruitment of rural health professionals given the lack of education and training programs within rural communities. Madam Speaker, in the Caribou region alone, there are 6,000 residents on the waiting list for family doctors and thousands more who are waiting but haven't even been registered. Almost half of the residents in our region are currently left without a family doctor. Our communities are lacking the health care infrastructure and professionals necessary to provide adequate service, and yet nothing seems to be coming forth with clarity. In addition to staffing challenges, rural residents face issues surrounding health care related transportation that people in urban centres simply do not face. The government's travel assistance program is inadequate with most folks paying significant out-of-pocket expenses to travel to urban centres to access care. 
All while in some rural, ambul or rural areas, rather, ambulance wait times are up to 40 minutes. And we know that that has been much longer in Caribou Chilcotin and other rural areas. In 2022, an infant died in Barrier waiting for an ambulance. In the same year, a man and woman in Ashcroft died from cardiac arrest while waiting for an ambulance. And Madam Speaker, of course, in my riding, a 14-year-old lost his life due to cardiac arrest while waiting for an ambulance. It's unacceptable. These issues affect certain groups more than others. For example, rural seniors often bear the brunt of these harms, whether it's access to a family physician, 24 adult uh, acute care hospital services, diagnostics and laboratory medical specialists, long-term care beds, home care or ambulance services. Seniors in rural BC have less access than their urban counterparts. Rural BC has proportionately a larger, faster growing seniors population than urban BC, yet it has less infrastructure and resources to support the aging population. Madam Speaker, all of these facts that I've shared today paint a grim reality for rural British Columbians. Too often, we have ignored these issues that are facing rural residents. It is time to hear less empty words and increased spending to solve some of these health care issues in rural British Columbia. Thank you, Madam Speaker.